Hi lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. Today I am reviewing Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. I listened to the audiobook for this, which was narrated by Rumi Nordlinger. This is a dystopian, queer, feminist, wild west post-apocalyptic story. Whew. It is also a novella. So this happens in a new a near future where some cataclysmic event has happened. The U.S. has reverted back to kind of older technologies. And so she is traveling around the Wild West. <laughs> She's traveling through the, um, I think they're actually in like the Southwest going up north. So I think she's traveling from Arizona to Utah throughout this book. But basically, society has kind of collapsed. And instead, we have this very, very patriarchal, like incredibly patriarchal government that has approved propaganda and like things that you are allowed to read. Um, and you are definitely like women do not have rights in the society anymore. Um, Esther, our main character, is basically the property of her father. And the book starts off with her father trying to marry her off to somebody else that she doesn't want to do. So she's running away. And we find out very early on in this book that Esther is uh, queer. Pretty sure she's like fully a lesbian, but definitely likes women. Um, and so she was actually having a secret thing with her best friend named Beatrice. Um, and they were just kissing and making out behind, you know, buildings and whenever they're in private. So before the book starts, um, Beatrice has been caught with illegal reading materials, things that are not state approved. And so Beatrice gets hung for that. And that combined with the fact that Esther's father is trying to marry her off to the man that Beatrice was supposed to marry, um, who Esther doesn't really no, has no interest in. He's like an older guy and her father is like one of the most important people in town and like is doing this for political reasons and she's just like no I want no part of this. So she runs away and the group she runs away with is called the librarians. This is a a, a covered wagon um, kind of convoy that travels from town to town and just lends out approved materials. So these are books, um, books, music, uh, movies that have been approved by the state that have a kind of upright, um, good moral standings, these kind of stories. Some of it's nonfiction, some of it's fiction, but they're all like patriarchal, basically, even though there's romance and stuff, like you're all supposed to still toe the line. And the librarians are supposed to be these very upright women. In fact, the posters recruiting new librarians say upright women wanted. Esther sees this as her chance to leave. She crawls into one of the co covered wagons and like ducks down underneath blankets and everything and just hangs out. And then a few days into the journey, she is discovered. And the two librarians who are running the, um, the wagon decide to take her along. Um, there's actually a bit of a, a struggle within the group. There's three librarians total, but the head librarian is like, we're going to take her. And so the other two are like, all right, if you insist. And so Esther is reluctantly allowed to come with them on their journey to Utah. So on this journey, Esther discovers that the librarians aren't all upright. Um, in fact, all the librarians that she are, she is traveling with are queer. Um, Two of the librarians are coupled together, so two women, and then the third librarian is non-binary. So they have to present as female when they are in towns, but when they are just traveling on the road and it's just the librarians, um, they prefer they pronouns and wearing like men's clothes. So this is Esther's first experience really dealing with people who are queer and open somewhat open about it like she and her best friend Beatrice were like hiding it in secret they had no idea that there was anybody else like them they thought it was just the two of them and that it was like sinful but like they're traveling with other queer people and along the way they meet more queer people um who are also hiding it in public but when they're in private they're allowed to be themselves and so Esther starts gaining more 
confidence in accepting herself and also finding out along the way that she might actually have a place with the librarians. Like she was just going to travel with librarians as a means of getting out of town. But actually, as the book goes on, she is more in line with her thinking than she originally thought. So the women are also smuggling resistance pop propaganda, too. Um, so like the illegal materials Beatrice was found with, that was the librarians. Um, so I love the undermining the patriarchy bit of this book. I love the queer main characters. And it's all set within this Wild West um, world. They have horses and they're in cavern wagons and it, the towns they're going to still sound very like wooden buildings and stuff. Although they do have some technology, they are still like there are movies. Um, and I'm not sure if they're watching them on televisions or they're being projected in like screens and like towns or stuff. I'm not exactly sure of how much technology they really have in this world. I know that like the military has a little bit more, like the military has diesel trucks and tanks. Um, but the average people do not have that kind of money. We also hear a lot about like a war that is happening and one of the reasons why the government is so strict about the propaganda is that they need everybody to be on the same side and together and like a united front in this war but we don't really know what the war is. I don't know if the war is part of why the apocalypse happened or the war is just um, a, another outside thing that is happening. And we don't really ever find out about it, which is kind of disappointing because it sounds really interesting. But it's just, it's a minor thing in Esther's story. And so we don't really get to find out a whole lot about it. It's like teased at. And it felt like a little, it was not satisfying to not find out more about this war. On the whole, I ended up giving this three stars, mainly because it, it, I had so many more questions. If it were longer, if it were a full-fledged novel and they had taken the time to explain more of the world, it might have gotten more than three stars. And it is definitely focused on these women and their queer experiences. Like, it's a very focused lens. If you are not into feminist queer readings, you probably won't enjoy this no matter how much you enjoy the Wild West. And I personally am not the biggest fan of Westerns. They're good occasionally. And so I feel like the West thing is even... The Wild West is kind of a sub minor thing and compared to the rest of the story I guess. It's a solid read. It's not the most amazing. Yeah. There is my review for Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. Check it out if you want to. It may be that it's just more for somebody else than me. I love like I read this because I was marketed as being sci-fi and I was expecting more sci-fi elements but there it's mostly the Wild West and it's not Greatest one. I wanted a space western and that wasn't this. <laughs> Not enough technology for that. So there you go. There's the review for Upright Woman Wanted by Sarah Gailey. Uh, peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.